here. We're still in one piece. Yeah. We are live. <laughs> What's going on, beautiful people? We're getting ready for another weekly daily Wednesday. Yes, we are. It's going to be a thing. It's going to be a little bit terrifying. Nah, it's not going to be terrifying. Well, it might be terrifying because let's think about what day it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it fell on LWW. <laughs> and as usual, we're doing um, F all about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get that pulled down. How's everybody doing? I hope everybody's in one piece. Uh, maybe you're still in lock up or mm -hmm. voluntary or involuntary because I know <laughs> some people's like, well, there's nothing to do. I might as well stay at home. While others of you are like, I'm going to stay at home anyway, man. What are you talking about? This is like nothing has changed in my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except that there's less TP at Aldi's. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's one of the things I appreciate about this whole um, rush on the toilet paper. It's, um, I haven't had a case of the Swamp Pass in over two weeks. Is there despite even sitting oh. down, no. Despite ha being sit down the whole day, there's no swamp pass. Hmm. <laughs> Damn, those baby wipes are amazing. <laughs> Pedro, <laughs> me on the other hand, been going through a lot. I've had an actually very upset stomach the last few days. <laughs> oh, that was bad was, timing. Uh, yeah, I was up most of last night, so... <laughs> Why is that... Oh, you were on out. Post fader, not out, but... And... <laughs> Let's see, I need to get Pedro locked in. There we go, and I don't need that. I don't need that. <laughs> I do need that. You, I need. <laughs> you can't see it, but trust me, I need it. I'm there mm. with you, Keegan. Although this whole not going anywhere, uh, especially Nori not taking the bus everywhere, not having to pay for the bus, and us not having to, you know, buy food uh, during the day, because I'm cooking the whole time. <laughs> so, um, oh, yeah. It's, um, it's actually nice. <laughs> I had a surprising amount of money left over, even after paying the rent and the council tax and uh, everything. I was like, huh, that's odd. <laughs> Let me see mm -hmm. if that's going to work. Get everybody tied in into a mono chain right now, so I got to get levels dialed in. Just so. This is a lot less dangerous. And a lot less work than if I had managed to get a 6.1 or 6.0 pre-1 on door because I'm going to be moving over to a completely different plug-in chain. Moving oh. from CAF to LSP, so that would have been... Oh. Mm -hmm. Say things for like 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the CAF, uh, you've been using those CAF plugins. I see that in all the screenshots of our door. Huh. Cap's perfectly fine. I'd like to, I mean, you can mix and match. There's, uh, like, I don't mind a compressor, but I run into bandwidth issues with a compressor because it, well, I run into them now because I only have a one gigabit, one gigabit link instead of a 10 gigabit link. So when I have, like, two compressors, going and they're always in the channel strip and you look over and you're like ah, let's see i'm sending 905 megabits mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> forging in the backyard for great yeah <laughs> i need to go to the grocery but i'll do that maybe tomorrow yeah that's tomorrow for me <laughs> we're Running dangerously low on food now. No. <laughs> are you running low on food, or you're or are you running on low on like non-canned items? Non-canned items. Oh, okay. <laughs> you still got the emergency. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the wall of canned goods <laughs> is still there. <laughs> oh, hi, Keegan. How are you doing? Um, 
And Mir, hope you're feeling better. Yeah, I've been a bit ill myself. And uh, yeah, there's been a rush on uh, pasta, rice, uh, flour. Yeah, eggs. And uh, yeah, toilet paper. No, 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 no. plenty of eggs. Um, mm. Not so much on the um, olive oil. There's also been a bit of a rush there. Oh, yeah. That's an odd one. Yeah. Well, people are cooking. But, <laughs> so. yeah, no, there's plenty of meat. Yeah. Plenty of, uh, like, frozen stuff. That's plenty of that. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, no, the toilet paper aisle is empty. The pasta aisle is empty. <laughs> yeah. That was the first to go here, too. Uh, but we, it's always we got interesting to watch the um, <laughs> buying patterns of sheep, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's annoying? It's like, is, well, know, I would I... like to buy some more gnocchis now, but I can't uh, because they're gone. <laughs> the trick to getting teepee here is uh, to get up early in the morning and stand in the line. And poor Steve has done that already. And um, but I Baby found wipes. another one. Plenty yeah. of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that works. I actually have some of those as well. Um. Come on, mouse. Mouse? Yeah, mother, yeah no, you like, would... even canned meats and tuna and salmon and sardines. There's, uh, you can see that there are those, like, empty spots. Yeah. But there's still plenty of choice. <laughs> That's good, yeah. We still, we have plenty of food here. It's just the toiletries that are wiped out now. <laughs> It's like, I thought at this thing. point, everyone, at least around here, would have already yeah. stocked up as already much as hoarded. they could have. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> already ordered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we kept thinking that, too, because, you know, we got, we had, here in Cali, we had it a week, week before you guys did. And it's still a problem here. Apparently, <laughs> there's more stupid people out there than I originally anticipated. Yeah. <laughs> well... You're just dealing with population density, man. California's got a lot of people in it. Yeah. That's definitely an issue. I did find a, a, a trick to finding teepee on Amazon, though. <laughs> that it, most people don't even think about. <laughs> a lot of stupid... Well, I mean, <laughs> you have a dense population of people who don't have challenges like weather. So... <laughs> Sometimes it catches on fire and it shakes a little bit. But outside of that, California's a pretty decent place to live. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you don't drive. Or... <laughs> I just couldn't be stacked on. I mean, it's really in New York bad. Yeah, because they're such a vertical city. It's just so congested. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah, we, we've got it at our school. And I'm like, thank God I didn't. I haven't been there since December and um, we had a big breakout in the art department with the instructors and some of the students and it ranged from a really bad flu to colds to and it was suspected that COVID was there uh, because of one of the instructors recently coming back from China. <laughs> <laughs> right, there's that yeah. and that will be the end of our COVID talk. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sure, people don't want to hear about that because it's genuinely the only thing on any news channel. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, it's the first time this has happened in a long, long time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Certainly in the age of the interwebs. Yes. Um, what? SARS, uh, the H1N1, and the shit. We've had warning yes, the shots. Flu, the bird yeah. flu, um, yeah. the swine flu. Warning shots the... that were ble Oh, Ebola? Remember that Ebola? Yeah, Remember that, that was that a big thing. Yeah, plenty of warning shots. None of those got this far. I no, know. They weren't as contagious. <laughs> got this far as made it over here. Ebola was pretty nasty in Africa, man. Um, yeah. But, yeah, welcome to humanity. It's like, no, no, 
something's something's really got to catch on fire. Then, then we'll see. We're reactionary. That preparing? No. No, no, no. Don't be silly. Let's wait until it happens. <clears throat> that's what the UK government decided to do. <laughs> But that's it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they were. <laughs> this is nothing new. I can go back and read history, man. I mean, anytime you seem like a big contagion, this is the same thing that rolls on, man. It's cool. Whatever. But. Oh, Matt Cow's disease. I forgot about that one. <laughs> yeah. And I've heard lots of stories about the Black Plague when my grandmother was alive and uh, uh, ways they prevented from getting it. And fortunately, she lived on a farm. <laughs> so. But they had to li literally live off potatoes for like six year six months. It was bad. Imagine being old enough to go through the Black Plague. <laughs> Maybe the bubonic plague. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was the Spanish flu. That was a bad one too. Let's see, what was the, um... Thirteen fifty... European outbreak, thirteen fifty-one. Grandmother's pretty old, man. <laughs> Work servers are overloaded. Dude! Can you imagine yeah. having to go through any type of isolation without internet? Hey. I want you to think about that. Think about how lucky you are. Yeah. Everybody watching this show, imagine if this went down in like 1985, man. You wouldn't be doing any. No Netflix. <laughs> You'd have three. Well, even if you had cable TV, they would all be like, oh, we're covering this. And then that'd be it. Oh, no, no, no. It's, uh... The predictions of the massive increase in pregnancies during the uh, quarantine period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another boomer mm -hmm. period. Yes. The Corona boomers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right on, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my my brother's uh, work. I thought it was really clever. Yeah, I thought it was really clever when uh, Nori and I were talking and I called him Corona Boomer. It's like, oh, that's really clever. And she's like, you're not the first one to think of that. Damn it! Yeah, I have I have seen it, but yeah. Can it be at least 1987 so we can have Amigas? 1986, man. And the fact that you'll know that they're being released in 87. Gen Corona. I was born in 86. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me get something to drink, and uh, we will get underway. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, my my poor brother's had so much work; he can't. Yeah, he's barely sleeping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, yeah, that infrastructure that we had in place that, like, 10 people used to uh, do work remotely at any one time. Yeah, now everyone in the company is using it. It's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, I... Uh, again, I already said this. Um, the nihilist in me is absolutely loving this particular um, situation. Because... <laughs> You get to see the stupid rise up to the top more yes. and more as time goes on. The <laughs> IT support person in me, you know, the one that pays the rent, uh, is happy. Is, yeah. uh, I'm not terribly happy with having to explain something that Microsoft has already written a guide for in plain English with screenshots, specifically for those people. And you say, okay, just follow this guide, and it'll be done. It's like, ugh, I can't focus on that right now. Can't you just call me and guide me through? It's like, I'm not your mom. Okay? <laughs> I get paid less than you do. So, 
Yeah. Figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I had someone straight up tell me, it's like, plain English or not, I just can't focus on it right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, you're going to remain unable to do your job. <laughs> yes. <sighs> mm. Yeah, Matthew, you'll find another job. He, you know, working at Disney got laid off. But yeah, I know no, there's a bunch of companies that are again. cutting out uh, part timers, mm. um, contractors. Yeah. Basically, anyone who's not on a permanent contract that they wouldn't have to pay a severance. Yeah, exactly. For kenning them? Yeah. <laughs> Disney, actually, I've been really happy. They're they're doing a good job despite, you know, everything. All their, what they call all their verticals where they make money aren't, you know, they have no money income. And even the, the CEO is not, not getting paid right now, which, you know, he makes a lot of money. So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> but he he has a savings so <laughs> yeah no, no and uh, at, when you get up to that level it's like yeah, yeah you could put that money all in like a savings account and live off of the interest that it collects yeah. easily exactly <laughs> so don't give me that <laughs> <laughs> yeah But yeah, it's really good that, you know, all his cast members are being paid at all the parks. And uh, that's wonderful. Yeah, no, um, people uh, here uh, don't seem to um, get the memo. Uh, and they keep hiring contractors and part-timers and uh, limited time mm. people. It's like... Um... You do realize what's happening, right? You do realize that yeah. we're going to have to send them their laptops, so it might come from one of us uh, if we're infected and we don't know about it. It might come from one of the couriers if they're infected and they don't know about it. Or if someone has an issue and they need to send their laptop back, then we have to deal with that. Yeah. <laughs> We, d we use disinfectant wipes on everything that comes to the house. And when Steve goes to the store, he has his gloves, he has his mask on, yeah. and we disinfect. I mean, we're, like, doing the full thing, <laughs> like, not taking chances. <laughs> and, in fact, I, got, I just got a package, and I'm letting it sit for, like, three days. I haven't touched it. Because um, pla it can live on plastic three or four days. And, uh, yeah, 72 yeah. hours. So we're still days. talking about it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do a show. Mm -hmm. Closer. Maybe. I can reach that. Hey, at least I can use capacitive touchscreens again. That's a nice feeling. <laughs> it's a cruel joke, kids. Mm -hmm. Never lose your ability to make contact. I don't, didn't have any sausages either, man. I was out of luck. <laughs> It's like three days I was that joke the... on Wednesday. What? <laughs> I was going to make a joke, but then I remembered, oh, it's Wednesday. I can't good, make that joke. Good, 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 good. <laughs> All right. Let's see. We hit pause. Don't you love it when you accidentally find a shortcut? Yes. I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> you hate it? You're like, oh, this is miserable. This is going to save me so much time. I hate this. Grr. Yeah. I am mildly indifferent. 
I usually, usually it's, then... it's like, what? Why did I find that sooner? It was obvious. <laughs> <laughs> With games, the first thing I do is I go into the options menu and I rebind all the controls. Mm -hmm. When I am wanting to learn a um, new bit of software, the first thing I do is I look up the keyboard shortcuts. <laughs> okay, let's say when you're dealing with like software that has 115, 120 shortcuts. Yeah. I learn the ones That's... that I will use. <laughs> it's like, is there one to do this specific thing? Search for it? Yes, there is. <laughs> but they didn't have one listed for what the rocker wheel on the mouse does. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> the up and down. I was like, oh, that's neat. That's something you could do in our door. I was like, let me see if I can do something to bind that to it. And I just ran into that after years. I was like, oh. Okay. I did one of the things that I did like that OBS used to do was you would be able to mouse over one of the um volume meters and scroll up or down and it would go up or down. Mm. They remove that. Mm. You can't do that anymore. It's like, God damn it, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Oh, you you Yeah, yeah, I don't know if I've ever used the volume meters in OBS. <laughs> it's just because it's like, okay, I could just scooch the mouse over without even clicking the window, scroll up, scroll down, do some minor adjustments right here and there, they're done. <laughs> do they have any logic for removing that? Uh, they, we talked about it on the show, actually. It wasn't the release notes that they had removed that because of, like, accidental scrolls, I think it was. Hmm, I couldn't remember that. I know I yeah. was asking them... Just straight up. I wasn't even asking. I just wrote it on Twitter. I'm like, dude, why don't you give me like 12 channels to record on? And I forget who it was. And somebody like mentioned, like replied to me and not replied and somebody from the OBS project's like, oh, we figured that would confuse the users. And I was like, I didn't write them back because the only thing I would have said was OBS walking that narrow path of being just too complicated for the average user, but not usable enough for anything serious. You do a fine line of walking. Yeah, the, they're targeting the gamers. <laughs> it looks like you have kitty cat ears, by the way. <laughs> it yeah. does, yeah. <laughs> it's the pillow. <laughs> oh! Let, let me dream. <laughs> okay. Kitty cat ears. <laughs> there, kitty cat ears. <laughs> Weeb! All right, let's do a show. <laughs> Um, let's get to the editor. Let's get that bumped back. Record armed and automations going. So let's bump that back to mixer. Cool. Maybe. Or, uh, seems like a cool story, bro. And three, two. Hey, and welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fantastic things that we found going on in the world of Linux. I'm Vince Stone. That's Joe Bright. Mm -hmm. And that is a perfect Pedro Mateus with his kitty cat ears. <laughs> That's a bold Ow. move. Takes a brave man. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, beautiful people? Um, everybody safe, sound, um, still doing the things. Everybody seems to be in one piece. I know everyone's stuck at home. But mm -hmm. hopefully much. we can offer you a little bit of an escape from that for a few minutes. I know yeah. the past couple of days I've been fighting with the Adore, which is the DAW software that we used to record this show on Linux after years. I think uh, Adore 5.3 came out in 2017, so it's been a minute. Uh, mm -hmm. Paul has released um, Adore 6 Pre-1 to anybody who backs the project and... I think you can just get it from the GitHub, but you can't get a particular version to do. But this is a debug build. I tried to get it up and running to test it in production. I got it up and running to a point to a point where it just laughed at me and started crashing and locking. So I was like, no, no. we're done with that. Mm -hmm. But I did try. I did try with that hot mess of Nopus. I, I look forward to playing with it in the future. Uh, another thing we did Friday, Pedro, we did something. Me and you. Yes. We had a party. We, uh... Got some mm -hmm. uh, Meet the Freemans into Black Mesa. That's what it's called. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, for Yay. some reason my brain was screaming Project Borealis, but no, 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 that's <laughs> the other one. <laughs> that was good. We'll fun. get to that at some yeah. point. Yeah, <laughs> we're playing around with the Black Mesa Kua. Moon back this Friday. Uh, when did we do it? 6 p.m.? Uh, it was around six, so it'd be 10. Yeah, it, yeah, was, it was, uh, earlier yeah. than your usual yeah. streams. Yes. It was 6 p.m. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so if you want to come and hang out and play a little bit of that, uh, probably hammer on it again this Friday, I will post a message in our discord. All you need is Black Mesa right now. You have to order it on Proton. Uh, I've already chatted with the developer. There's a fix in the works on that. And uh, you'll need the workshop mod, the Black Mesa Coop. Then you won't have to do anything on your end to be able to join the game. But it's kind of fun. It's multiplayer Half-Life 1. So come yep. check that out. <laughs> what have you been mm -hmm. up to, Jill? Oh, boy. So yesterday I had fun again on Linux Unplugged. That's always a lot of fun. And this time I ended up spending probably over an hour just talking to their uh, to the um, Jupiter Broadcasting community after the show. And that's always a lot of fun, you know, getting to know even more of the Linux community. It's, it's great. And it was a really, really fun show and a, a good uh, good chance to, you know, do something fun. But I unfortunately did miss Pedro's stream because of it. <laughs> Aww. It's just Dark Souls. <laughs> I get that it won't be everyone's cup of tea, so. <laughs> Aww. Speaking of Dark Souls, what have you been up to, Petra? Well, uh, yesterday I streamed more of that. Managed to get all the way through Blight Town without mm. dying. I only died when I tried to help someone else beat uh, Quilag. So there's that. But I died okay. in someone else's world, so it doesn't count. I have very limited Dark Souls experience. I know enough of it that I don't like it, but I can watch somebody <laughs> play it. I am capable of appreciating someone else's joy in something that I was like, I don't care about this thing. Is that a particularly difficult part of the game? Uh, the, yes, Blight Town is like the worst because it, the original one and the original game, the frame rate used to tank mm -hmm. like really badly. Even on the consoles, uh, you would get like 15 FPS if you were lucky. Mm -hmm. And it's dark, it's hard to see, you die a lot, and there are these, um, ginormous pricks off in the distance all clad in black, that shoot uh, toxic darts at you. Hmm. So, yeah, no, it's that whole area is just nope in a Basically can. sounds like every <laughs> rave I went to in the 90s. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> That's cool. I tuned in, I saw that you were fighting um, the big giant spider from Lord of the Rings, and I was like, all right, have fun with that. And <laughs> it, it's the... The bottom is the spider, and then the top half is l naked lady. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever floats your boat, man. So, let's get into it. We got some exciting news. Something that is going to put an end to all of the hate between the projects. Uh -huh. <laughs> they finally merged, and I am talking about K. The gnome is silent. It is the K oh, project. Oh, is that how you pronounce it? Yes, okay. uh, it is actually that. <laughs> this is from the gnome project. They wanted to make sure, because you know it's spelled K and O M E. And, you know, the immediacy of now, best of both, both worlds, man. Katie and Noam merged together in one project, but they wanted to make sure that you knew that the K was, in fact, silent. Wait, no, it's the Noam, so it's just K. <laughs> yeah. That's going to get confusing coming on in the future. Man. Yes. But yeah. what do they say about it, man? Uh, now is the moment immediately happening. That's why K will be your desktop now or sometime next week. The state of art user experience, da da da. It's pretty awesome, man. I mean, mixing the flexibility and customization of GNOME paired with the stability of KDE. It's going to be Can awesome. we have it the other way around, please? Nope. Yeah, yes. <laughs> you can't, man. Uh, this combination, expertise of both the GNOME and KDE developers, they've managed to reduce the number of bugs to effectively zero. M. Oh, taking pot shots at Microsoft with the uh, Dude, black, I mean, uh, blue screen of death look this, alike. This, it's coming to mobile, too. Very excited to try this. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty awesome. Yeah, it yeah. Looks I think good. it was the, the animated user. GIF as a button that sold it for me. Mm. Yeah, the user interface does look beautiful. And truth be told, you can uh, both KDE and GNOME. You can kind of make them look like each other. 
<laughs> so yeah, no, it but works. Uh, since it, they're it going, <laughs> since they're going with the uh, customization of GNOME, that screenshot yes. of that layout is literally all you get. And until the third-party tools are developed <laughs> to allow you to change it, you can't do anything about it. Yeah. I was. Uh, going to call uh, BS uh, and XKCD 927 on this, but then I read the um, the agreement from the uh, KDE person. It's like, mm -hmm. a joint conference was only the beginning. K, G, uh, or <laughs> QTK3, yes. uh, K Mobile, and Lolly Rock. It's like, oh, so they're going the full thing. All right, okay. <laughs> okay, get it? Synergy. It's funny. <laughs> Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we're just going to keep saying K. Okay. K. 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 <laughs> Other news. Linux 5.6 is out, Joe. Yeah. This is really exciting. Um, you know, despite what's going on in the world, we still have a new release. Awesome. And one of the reasons is, of course, is because Linus is the social distancing champ who championed working at home and online. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. And so as we talked about in January, this release really sees the inclusion of the loved WireGuard VPN, which is really, really cool. And what Linux kernel update would be without more software, uh, more software and hardware support, including early support of USB 4 and support for, this is really cool, support for the MX Master 3 mouse and other wireless Logitech products, which many of us do have. So that it was really mm. cool. And even more support for AMD GPUs, NVIDIA GPUs, and Intel Tiger Lake chipsets. Mm. And actually, this the, ne the last one I want to mention, which is a real big deal, honestly, is the improvements in AMD Zen temperature power reporting. I know there were some issues with that. <laughs> oh, so. it took them a while. <laughs> <laughs> it took them a while, yeah. <laughs> it always does take a minute. I was. Yes. This is going to be the first release that we've seen with kernel level XFAT support. Mm -hmm. That's cool. You know, and I'm like, hey, that's been a month, it's but now it's inside wonderful. the kernel. Don't have to worry about it. Boom, just get it done. ButterFS now has a discard async, which is going to group together you're like and scheduling all of your trims, so you don't have to set up like a trim schedule anymore. And yep. that's great, but I mean, did you really have to worry about that running ButterFS? I mean, the file system probably knackered itself already, so mm. by the time you would need to run <laughs> Well, Shredder, if you're Strider, <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so Aww. that's the thing. There has been a regression fix for the CH341 uh, with the line speed with USB, and you're like, wait a minute, was that why my USB device is running slow? Yes, it was. So that's taken care of, and Pedro. <laughs> what happens if you have well, an Intel wireless card? <laughs> if you have cool. an Intel wireless card released at any point over the past five years, mm. um, you may have experienced some issues if you mm -hmm. uh, built the kernel and started using it. Namely, uh, that you were connected, but it was dropping all of the packets. Mm. And that is because uh, in order to quell one of the security vulnerability bits, uh, they removed a certain part of the um, the Intel drivers, and they forgot that the MVM um, branch of IWL, which includes those cards from the last five years, mm -hmm. kind of needed that statement. Otherwise, all the packets, it would see them as though they had not been checked for keys because it literally wasn't checking for keys, so it was just dropping them all. And uh, there, I put the link to the fix uh, in the show notes. And uh, yeah, judging by the uh, the fix, there's let's see, Intel Wireless seventy two sixty thirty one sixty seventy two sixty five thirty one sixty five eighty two sixty eighty two sixty. Ultimately, at the A end of the day, of <laughs> at the end of the day, the beautiful thing about this, this was Intel's fault. They did it to themselves. Foot shot, yep. blam. But it's going to get fixed. That's not a big deal. Yay. I'm running it it's right now. It's already been released. Yeah. I mean, the patch is there. Uh, I haven't applied the patch because I don't have any Intel wireless kit, but I am going to get on Jackbox. <laughs> and so the day it was released, I'm like, yeah, then I always scroll through the comments on Reddit until I see the, oh, that means it'll be in the AUR later tomorrow, possibly. I'm like, I'm just going to download and build it. That, that, that. Why? Because building a kernel is fun and easy. You should do it too. It only takes a few minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not and to I, too, it. very much appreciate the uh, Logitech uh, device support for no reason at all. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I, probably because you like it. You, you, 
You buy a mouse that requires drivers. It doesn't require the drivers. It's yeah. just nice to have. Okay. Uh, okay. It, 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 you, you own a mouse that you can complain about and doesn't have full functionality without drivers. Okay. So I like to buy hardware that makes me work for it a little bit. <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> Gee, Pedro, I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Explain yeah, about you're the this. one to talk. No, 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 no. no. Tell yeah. me more about this complex mystery of this mouse that's going to boggle me. <laughs> <laughs> it was mostly figuring out how to store the uh, profile in the mouse itself. <laughs> that's a beautiful thing. Hey, uh, we got fat support inside the kernel, but uh, one company that was like, hey, man, we sold a product that kind of did that. Uh, I'm not happy about it. Nope. Mm-hmm. Paragon. Software. Mm-hmm. Happy about it? None the least. The proprietary file system vendor unleashed a 90s level torrent of FUD yesterday. Uh, this is from Jim Salter <laughs> over at Ars Technica. All this in our show yeah. notes. Basically, just they're going to break down the FUD and they're like, booga booga, this is bad. Buy our stuff. Don't use now that it's built directly into Linux. And I just wanted to point this out because I thought it was old school, man. This is like Late 90s, early 2000s level of Linux, bad. Now you have to use our stuff or uh, you'll break things, which is completely and wholly untrue. Not yeah. that anyone watching or listening to this show is buying into any of this. I just thought we'd have a good laugh at this. And hey, man, open source is, in fact, here to stay. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry that you built your business model on that. Mm. Yeah, on that one particular bit of functionality that was patent protected and you were paying for the license and then reselling it at a massive, massive markup. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, no, uh, (laughs) like all the three cases that uh, they gave as to why this is um, bad, that uh, now it's open source and you shouldn't use it, is literally, it's like, please don't use the open source one. Buy our proprietary implementation instead. But didn't Microsoft release? Did, they did. Yeah. It was the last of the patents of that like big bunch that they did. And then people yeah. were saying, it's like, um, how about XFAT? And they released that too. Then mm-hmm. Pedro so, was like, fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that was <laughs> by yeah, was one point thing. of contention with that. It's like, okay, you get the benefit of that again, Microsoft. <laughs> That that's such a safety play because you're just giving some time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that that other shoe is going to drop at some point. Mm-hmm. Jill? So Yeah, so um th- that was, you know, they they were said in the article how it be, would be less secure than than their own X fat. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> You know, you can't blame them for trying, right? This doesn't work. They yeah. tried. <laughs> they tried, yeah. I guess they had investors that they needed to appease, so... Pedro, yeah. at least they weren't trying to plug antivirus. Well, uh, to be uh, fair... Yes. Oh, no. That's not only <laughs> on Sim and Tech. Uh, that's also part of uh, R- Luke Rawlings' uh-huh. fault. Because uh, at first, he made a Twitter poll. It's like, should L- Linux users run antivirus software? And 42% said no, and uh, 30, uh, 40% said, it's like, for email file servers, and only the other 18% said yes. What the hell's wrong with you? But uh, then he posed the same question to uh, a bunch of other companies, like uh, Canonical, uh, Suzy, System76, Red Hat, and uh, Syntec. Uh So... Red Hat and uh, System76 replied and said, no, just follow um, good practices and make Mm -hmm. sure you're not doing things that will inevitably get you malware regardless of whatever operating system you happen to be running. But they said, no, just follow good practices. And then Symantec replied by, yes, you should buy our product. Mm -hmm. I think that kind of says it all at that point. It's like, (laughs) So okay. yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm writing them a paper <laughs> yeah. check for the uh, antivirus software because I'm pretending that it's like the <laughs> mid-90s. Jill, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah. So, you know, this, the simple answer is, is to, to keep your system updated and only use root when absolutely necessary. Just just keep updating. And, you know, there's other really good tools out there for security, including SE Linux. And um, 
both uh, System76 and Red Hat had talked about that. And uh, Semantic also mentioned that IoT is an, is an issue. Well, that's an issue because usually, yes, the um, Internet of Things are usually running old and outdated software and kernels that are harder to update or impossible because of proprietary blobs like our, our routers and whatnot. So, yeah, that is a thing, but it's it's it you can fix it easily. And uh, Pedro had a really good fix on that one. <laughs> Yeah, no, the biggest security obvious. problem when it comes to <laughs> IoT is change the damn default credentials, please. Now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that hard. Just do it. Yeah. <laughs> this is the thing. At home, don't just don't install Cody. <laughs> <laughs> not unless you want to go on a list somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Be safe. Oh, yeah. speaking of blinky drobles. Do yes. Yes. <laughs> this one is um well it's open RGB. It's exactly what it says on the tin. This is the first release. It's version 0.1. Uh and there are some known issues right off the bat. And what open RGB does it it's exactly what it says on the tin. It's an open source way to control all of your RGB devices from a single bit of software. Which is great. It's amazing. Probably not going to get any official support from the likes of the Corsairs, the Logitechs, the any of the other ones. But it's great to have. And one thing I noticed is that they have mm -hmm. ooh, Windows binaries. It's like, oh, yeah. you're actually putting those out immediately. Mm -hmm. Very good. Because one of the things that uh, Windows is currently suffering from is uh, RGB software being, uh, or malware being passed off as uh, RGB yes. software. So good. This is good. I'm not saying that I've been asked about uh, Razer's RGB Chroma on a work laptop and getting that up and running, but with people working from home a lot more nowadays, I I can see that happening. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> tell me about this. Is this uh, like blink all the things, like uh, motherboards and keyboards? Yep. Uh, and basically, if you have any kind of addressable gerbils. RGBs, yes, connected to your system, be it mice, keyboards, uh, the LEDs inside your case. Mm -hmm. uh, this, in theory, is the one unifying thing that will make them all blink as you want them to. So there like, are some well, issues because mm. well, first release. This is going to be able to look <laughs> yeah. eventually with my Threadripper motherboard, which has analog and digital RGB on it. Probably, yeah. If it's yeah. firmware accessible, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. I'll never install it. Be sure to avoid it. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> oh, well, I'm it might already to even work. This. Oh, it might, and we'll never know. <laughs> oh, well, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to playing with this. I have lots of bling bling here in in my room, and um, enjoy it. And uh, um, what's really cool is you know I have been using the Open Razor driver on my older Black Widow Chroma keyboard. Uh, with and it works really really well, but it didn't work with every model of of their keyboard and mice. So this mm -hmm. looks like it's going to solve that. <laughs> so I'm and really if happy they to can hear make uh, if they can figure out a way to actually make addressable RGB addressable on Linux using just the one bit of software, I think a lot of mm -hmm. people will actually enjoy that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and I will judge you loudly. <laughs> 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 I mean, my my computer case is uh, below the desk, mm -hmm. and the front is right up against the uh, Pedro, LX drawers. Haven't here, you learned so. anything? You you have a clear. You need to put the computer case right at your desktop, right next to your head, and complain about coil wine. <laughs> yes, I can hear the coil wine even with it being down there. Sometimes, I know, yeah. I know. But you you gotta, you gotta be like a real gamer pro, man. Just put it right there on the desk. Come on, so you can look at it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have El Cheapo for that. Fine. It's even got the tempered glass uh, side panel. Sometimes I turn it on just to see all the LEDs. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of weird, man, because I'm like looking under the desk now. I installed a desk, by the way. That's what I was wiring for like five days straight. And yeah, I have like side panels on both of these cases. Like, yeah, okay, that's neat. Um, don't care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's the thing. 
Uh, what do Aww. we have left? Oh, we got a couple more things. Uh, two more little yeah. things. Uh, first, fonts. a tale of fonts. Because you know what? Fonts, you never think about them. You don't. Mm-hmm. It doesn't run through your mind. You're like, ah, okay, there's a font. You see it on the web. It used to be a big issue. But, um, you know, fonts can make and break the complete look of something as simple as mm-hmm. like creating a title card. Even with my limited bit of design, if you're given enough fonts, I'm like, oh, geez, come on. Come on. That, what about that one? That one. Then you work your way down, work your way down, work your way down. Then then you just make it, you know, comic serif, like a real person, like whatever. Nah. <laughs> comic sans. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I, I love the title of, the, of this article. It's open source fonts are love letters to the the, the design community. Oh, and that's clever. I absolutely see true. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely true. And what's really nice is now you don't have to spend hundreds and even thousands to buy font packs like I have in the past for my classes and this is great because since you know as an animation and graphics teacher since the early 90s I've been tasked to find freeware fonts for my students to use and now it is so much easier as those freeware fonts are now open sourced and more plentiful and a result of open sourcing the fonts, of course, is greater variety, flexibility, and customization. You can customize the weight and the kerning. And I even have my stu- students do a typography project where they have to make their fonts, their own fonts, or uh, adjust a pre existing one that's uh, free or open source. And it's just, this is really wonderful. And, you know, Google was one of the first to open source. Um, their fonts and kind of the initiative for the moving from freeware freeware to the open source paradigm. And actually one of my favorite font families is the Ubuntu font family. And they were one of the first to be open sourced. And that was really awesome. And even Adobe has some open source fonts. And uh, it's just, it's really great. And it saves our, not only our students a lot of money, but the businesses and the community, and you get more variety as a result of it. So it's a win-win for everyone. Pedro, what's your favorite font? Mm-hmm. I like Droid Sans. What is uh, that? It is nice. It's a yeah. Google font. Mm-hmm. Uh, it mm-hmm. was the default font for Android for a while. Then they changed to Roboto, mm-hmm. and Roboto. Oh, I think it's Noto. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, yeah, no, I like Droid Sans mm-hmm. because it's like, oh, it's a really clean, non serif font, obviously. And uh, it, it, it looks really nice. And it came out, it was open source around the time that I was in university. So basically from that point on, any reports, any like things that I had to hand in, print and hand in, Droid Sans, all the things. <laughs> what are your opinions on people who use custom fonts and terminals? <laughs> Whatever the default cool. monospaced one for me, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Helvec, uh, like Gothic, or something. What is this? Ah. Yeah, the, the, I do yeah. see people with terminals with fonts that are. I actually have to, like... Hard to read. What the hell is that? <laughs> I've done it. I, I've absolutely done it because I'll see something like, oh, let's try that. Nope. Um, <laughs> that doesn't work with my simple, simple, simple mind. I think the default for um, KD Neon for the monospace is a uh, hack. Hmm. It's the hack mm. font. Yeah. They traditionally use whatever font is default. That one. That's good. Yeah. And if it's different between yeah, distributions, I, I, that I use one. that one. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing I'll change in the fonts on the operating system is the um, aliasing. Mm. Because sometimes there are some LCD panels that if you do full aliasing, you some rainbow. of the fonts look weird. Yeah. yeah. You get yeah. That, you get that weird so I, I cut it's that back true. down sometimes. Completely understandable. Mm-hmm. I did a thing. I took a challenge, man, because there's nothing, nothing more entertaining then spending $6 on eBay to see if something works, man. Uh, this is my little series that I'm just doing, a little side project uh, called Interfacing Linux. And this is where I'm testing out audio equipment on Linux. And I ran across this, man. It's kind of brilliant. This is a, what is it called? The new USB in and out interface cable converter mm-hmm. to PC music keyboard adapter cord. 100%. That's what it's called, man. And check it out. I mean, I looked at it. Oh, DIN and I, connectors. 
I only yeah. wanted to know one thing. Mm-hmm. That one thing being is where did they source sparkly USB cables in 2020? I couldn't find any, man. I'm like, oh man, <laughs> this is this is like 2001. I wanted to go rewatch The Matrix when I saw these cables, but <laughs> I even searched the internet, couldn't find anything. So I decided to order a set of these silver music noodles in hopes that they can Linux. Um, and I have a couple of things to test them. That's my X Touch Compat right there, which has USB, but it also has hardware MIDI because that's kind of important. You might be plugging these into your keyboard or your control surface is seen here. And turns out they did, mostly. For the most part, they worked with A2J MIDI and I was able to export the hardware. I tested them with generic MIDI CC and I tested them over here with Mr. Mackey, and I, I would say about 97, completely usable, but you could see some things were a little screwy, but not enough to the point to where I could not recommend them and recommend them I did. They got a 4.25 right. out of 5. Mm-hmm. You know, mainly mainly the nice. sparkles got them that extra 2.5. <laughs> they are cheaply made because these are 6.89 from eBay shipped. That's That's shipping included in that price. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. <laughs> and they're, they're made about as uh, quality as you would expect for $6.89. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but they work, especially if you're using with a genetic, generic. But we have a little bit of feedback on these. So, stick around to the end of the show um, about the ins and outs mm-hmm. of the, the varieties, apparently, that you can get of these particular. All right. <laughs> But that's pretty cool. Go check that nonsense out. Uh, there's a another one I'm working on. What I call the Smurf box, which is back here. <laughs> you can't see it. I don't have lights on. But co- mainly because it's blue, and that mm-hmm. is an interface that I think is going to be a great pick for anyone who's just getting into podcasting or streaming. Not only will it save you save you a chunk of money, it is going to be dramatically better than the cheapest thing that you can currently buy that people are buying right now. So it's going to be a win-win. That uh, probably awesome. later today or tomorrow, I will have that up for patrons and you can have first crack at the ones that are available. That's kind of brilliant. Jill. Yeah. Before we get out of here, <laughs> we have another interview yeah. from scale where you talked to a human being. And I assume, <laughs> I assume yes. they talk back to you. Yeah, so this was a wonderful interview I had with Kim McMahon, Director of Marketing for the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, which is a works under the Linux Foundation umbrella, of course. So this this was really great, and it was really a, a joy to meet and talk with her. Nice. Mm-hmm. That was pretty cool, man. Uh, do they normally come back like every year or? Jim? Oh, oh, the, the, <laughs> so, sorry. So yeah, uh, actually they, they have at the last three scales, they've mm-hmm. been at, at scale. And yeah, so this was, um, this is the first time that she came to scale though. So that was, was really awesome. I was just kind of looking through mm-hmm. that, man. Um, building yeah. sustainable ecosystems for cloud native software. So yeah. that was definitely something to check yeah. out. Yeah, Kubernetes and the like. <laughs> Good job. Good yeah. job. So we got to get into a slice of pie. Before we do that, we'd like to do a little bit of shameless self-promotion to pay the bills. Mm-hmm. And if you want to join our motley crew of people that like to hang out, with each other the other seven days a week. You can do that by becoming one of our powerful Patreons, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Come on, button on the web zone, linuxgamecast.com. We have Libra Pay. We have merch if you want to put us on your bodies. Good old fashioned PayPal. We have wish list for the studio and individually for Pedro, Jordan, and Jill. And we also accept mm-hmm. Bitcoin. That yeah. lets us do the show <laughs> ad free and all that fun stuff. I know a lot of people are at home sitting around and I noticed that because I made the mistake of pulling up a little number calculator for like last week's bandwidth, which was 186 gigs that had already been sent out. <laughs> it's like, oh boy, it's going to be a busy month, but that definitely helps with that. But we like to give you, you know, first crack at early things that we're working on. You get a custom show. You don't even know about that. You like what we do. We do a pre pre super mm-hmm. shows on every Saturday, which you get access to live, but also in podcast format. We do have the uncut versions 
in podcast form. If you need four hours of something to listen to during the week, you can have that. Um, what else do we have, Pedro? I know we have some other cool stuff. We do. Do you get uh, Discord access? You get, uh, of course, the um, show note contributions. You can totally go in there and basically comment on something we've said or submit your own stories, mm -hmm. which is uh, pretty amazing. And, uh, of course, any of our Patreons, if we are playing a video game like we will be on Friday, uh, you'd like to join, you get first crack, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and it's going to be first come, first serve on that, because we don't know where the um, squirrely <laughs> limit is in this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, we learned with Meet the Freemans, squirrely limit was around six. And <laughs> then the game logic just went, nope. So look forward to doing that thanks for letting us do this this is kind of cool it's a fun interesting little adventure at we like to you each and every mm -hmm. week but we need to get into just one mm -hmm. slice of pie not mm -hmm. too much just this one week. slice yeah teeny tiny, tiny little pie. slice of pie this week it's <laughs> um plasma big screen turns your raspberry pie into a smart tv it's like hold on that okay. is the one thing that i'm <laughs> okay hang on let's get it to the monitor that I have and the monitor mm -hmm. that I get that shows like, I want one too, Steve. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. So <laughs> what they are is the, what are they? 43 inches? Correct. 43 inch <laughs> UHD <laughs> monitors. And I've sold people. I'm like, they're like, Oh, you got a big screen TV. And I'm like, no, this is a monitor. And I'm like, wait, mm -hmm. what? I'm like, yeah, it doesn't have what, what's built into it. Nothing. They bought it. For yeah. TV, because people want <laughs> yeah. dumb TVs. But yeah. Back, back to making a dumb TV more intelligent, maybe? Yes, making yeah. basically your own smart TV where you do actually have the control over the software. That bit, that bit I get, that bit I'm absolutely 120% behind. What I, what put a smile on my face the moment I read the uh, title of the article was, Katie, running on a pie. And then if you read down a bit, it's like, oh, it offers uh, voice control support based on Mycroft. I was thoroughly awesome. amused by the choices <laughs> of just about of everything that they uh, decided to pack in this. But yeah, Plasma Big Screen, uh, it is, this one is going I'm to I'm going to be perfectly honest for the audio <laughs> listeners. The um, responsiveness of the UI is roughly that of uh, AHA's Take On Me video. Mm. Yes. <laughs> just gonna be honest you're getting 12 yeah. <laughs> maybe 13 uh hertz on that refresh but yeah it is very very early days for plasma big screen um uh, i remember seeing like a couple of days ago on twitter uh one of the kde people was showing it off it's like that's a bit rough <laughs> that, that that that's a bit rough and now they're slamming it on a pie it's like okay it's a pie for Sure, but it's still a pie. Come mm. on. <laughs> it's still cool. Yeah. I mean, homebrew. Yeah, no, uh, again, you said earlier, don't use Cody. Mm -hmm. Maybe use uh, Plasma Big Screen. Yeah. It may take some work to do some of the integration with the uh, rest of the stuff, but good work. Or buy a wireless yeah. keyboard and mouse like a normal person. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, KDE is is running on on mobile and actually quite stable, so it it makes sense that it can run really well on a Raspberry Pi four. So you know, this this is a good option actually. <laughs> Should be something to look yeah. at. Maybe you two have pounds thoughts. off eBay. Two yes. pounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Buy one of those. How, how how many time have you used that? Actually, several. Um, if yeah. for More some reason once. the uh, yeah. Uh, okay, for some hey, reason, hey, the Steam on, Box hey, decides hey, to... Let me roll back. we, 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 we got to put fighter points on this. Used it mm -hmm. like outside of like, I need to use this, or like, oh, here's the thing, and I just naturally reach for oh, it. Oh, no, no, no. It's only on a strictly need-to-use basis. Like, like yeah. oh, I, I've really... <laughs> there was Let's an update go. to the firmware on the Steam Box and, and the RAM device. speed reset mm. to uh, 2133. It's like, why is everything running so slow? <laughs> Let me go into the BIOS quick. Ah, there we go. <laughs> okay, that, that, that's that's the equivalent of the keyboard mouse uh, monitor crash card. 
Yes. <laughs> yes. That, that is literally it. <laughs> but it's a great thing to have, though, right? Yep. Right. No, it, it is. It's like, I plug have, it in, turn I it on, one done. <laughs> All right. That's really cool. Maybe you have a cool little device like that. You want to tell us about it? That'd be great. We'd love to hear about it. And there's a quick, easy, handy way to do that that only involves what? I mean, you can't really go outside anymore nowadays, but you can totally um, carry your pigeon, just attach a little USB with the video file that you recorded off your phone, and uh, send it our way. Or you can go to LinuxGameCast.com, you hit the contact button, make sure LWDW is the show that you're sending your feedback to, and fill out the form. It's pretty easy. Even a pigeon could do it. Pigeons Don't quote go me on Google. that. <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah, no. Let us know about Pi Project's weird devices that yeah. you managed to get working with Linux. Why not? Send us a question. Here's a good one. Yes. Yeah. Um, Wimpy wrote in. This we, is awesome. Tweeted at me. And hey, yeah. I, I understand my role in Linux. It's like, I have a video problem. It's like, hmm, yep, I'm getting that. <laughs> Wimpress. It's like, yo, Vin, do you know of a Linux supported PCIe multi port? HDMI capture card that doesn't require the sale of my kidneys to afford it. Mm -hmm. I need 1080p 60. No UHD required. Two HDMI in is good enough. Well, 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 well. Mm -hmm. Turns out I do. I kind of do. Because mm -hmm. I, I have my, my squiggly spooch is completely intact. I didn't have to sell it. And uh, I have a better solution. Because here, here's the unfortunate truth. The sad truth is... You know, if you need like a USB, like USB 3 HDMI, that's probably going to be good enough for like 99% of the people that want to do something. Those aren't terribly expensive, more like 100 bucks. As I've learned, um, if you start stacking more than one, then you run into infinite problems and they're very difficult to overcome. Then you start developing new dev rules and adding extra USB 3 cards and buying thread rippers. But, <laughs> but, 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 um, if you're looking for multi-input, you know, if you have like two inputs, three inputs, four inputs, you're down to two players. You are. Um, Black Magic and Majewell. And they know it. How do I know they know yeah. it? Go look at the pricing <laughs> for anything with more than one port. Like, yeah. yeah, we make up. Yeah. What are you going to do? Go to the competition. Black Magic's the budget option. And you're like, what? <laughs> you're like, oh, <laughs> oh, go look at Majewell pricing. Uh, Majewell, yeah. <laughs> but Majewell makes uh, broadcast grade stuff. I mean, if you have a Majewell card, Good on you. They, that piece of kit is designed to be cut on, put in a system, and left alone for its entire life cycle. Mm -hmm. So maybe that covers it. But uh, you're going to be looking for like a Major Wall Pro, I like um, 11080, or if you have the like the cheapest solution, if you do need this and you're at home and you're looking for, if you have a free M.2 slot, the 11530. It's an M.2 version with two HDMI ports, you know, and it comes with, like a little breakout card and two cables. That's mm. the cheapest thing you can get, and that's still good to run you. Um, like new, that's gonna be like 380 US, but you're probably looking at like 280, maybe 300 pounds for doing that. Option B is the budget option, which costs more, but it's the budget option. This makes sense, trust me. It's the <laughs> Blackmagic Decklink Quad, which has four 4K60 UHD capture ports on it. Individual shows up. In Linux, as for, you know, you install the drivers. Still trying to get one. And by that, my, I don't know, maybe that's something we'll do with the stimulus check. I'll finally look like, shut up and just get it. Um, that's a great piece of kit, but that's still running like 500 bucks. But that's also future proofing things a little bit. Plus, you yeah. get the ability to capture at UHD 3840 by 2160, which I think is nice. But um, I don't know where I was going with that. It, just uh, go for it. Get what you uh, get. One of those two, so, basically. <laughs> yeah. That, well, okay. What we ended up doing, what it, what I told uh, Wimpy was, what I found was a more economical solution, which has limited us, but it's gotten us through to this point. Like the next thing we're buying is that Black Magic Quad, is to buy individual decklink cards. Yeah. It's cheaper mm -hmm. because you can get the decklink four uh, Ks. Which they do 3840 by 2130, not 60, but they do 1080p60, which is we have one for Jill, we have one for Pedro, and I have one for my camera. 
and you can get those for like a hundred, you know, eighty to a hundred dollars a piece used on eBay all day long. But yep. it also does bring it to the point of having a Threadripper motherboard with a gang of PCIe slots too. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, because you know I have four by sixteen slots. So I'm like, Unless you're done. not doing anything with your GPU at the same time. Yeah, just take that out, put that down. I don't know how it's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> just grab that lone by four PCIe GPU that you've had in your cupboard for a few years, put that in, and all of a sudden you have by eight available. <laughs> mm-hmm. Good deal. What's up next, Pedro? Up next, we have some. A midi madness mm-hmm. uh, relating to uh, that uh, bit of uh, a sparkly USB midi con- conversion that was happening earlier. <laughs> uh, YouTube's comment system isn't the most helpful. I'll mirror my comment here. Good job. Uh, those cables vary depending on how much the particular batch maker decided to pinch pennies. Yep. I have some that look identical externally and work fine, but I wound up getting a refund on another that didn't work. Since then, I've discovered an explanation of what was probably wrong, missing components, and a DIY fix. And uh, there's a bit of a link. I'm guessing it's his uh, his own blog. This is from No, I don't Stephanie. think it is. Is it? Oh, it isn't? No. <laughs> All right. Unless it is. So, I, very, so you guess I cover yeah. your bases. <laughs> Uh, person on the blog, whether it is Stefan or not, figured out exactly what to solder and where. They also don't know how to do surface mount. Um, <laughs> no. no, I'm not throwing shade. <laughs> I'm throwing a little bit of shade. Um. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, uh, as it turns out, uh, if you wire in the aforementioned missing components, all of a sudden, it works much better. Go figure. <laughs> I looked at it's this. It's like, let's just skip a resistor here and a mm, diode here. They're I, done. I, 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 uh, I mean, that, <laughs> listen, you, you can, if it works, it works. That's all that matters. I mean, you know, that's a, that, that's a, that's a uh, that looks like a functional soldering job. I'll give it that much. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. here's what I meant then. Um, for me, part of the adventure was, it was six bucks. I mean, come on. It's like, yeah. worst case scenario, we're getting a video out of this somehow. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't work, don't buy it. Or, hey, look, it actually does something. And for $6. For me, I mean, this seems completely logical that there is a chance that there's varying degrees of quality because there's genuinely like 100 people selling these on eBay. Yeah, That's why I linked it. Like, mm-hmm. this is the person I bought these from. And uh, it also happened to be the cheapest ones on eBay with shipping included. Yep. But mm. I mean, most of them are free shipping. This was the cheapest <laughs> of those. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> truth in the title, the cheapest USB, whatever it was called on eBay. Um, it wasn't like a clickbait title at all. The time needed to implement this fix on a $6 item. I think I had just like dropped the 20 quid and be like, give me a real one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. You have to mm-hmm. value your own time accordingly. Well, it's like time. If we got the resistors or whatever we got, and then we break up. By the time we have to bring solder into the relationship, I'm like, yeah, this is by the real thing. This is, uh, I don't know, but that's cool to know. It might be a fun little side project, though. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, awesome. again, it's like six bucks. If you torch it, oops. Um, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then it's a tinker toy, whether you like it or not, because you're not using <laughs> yeah. it for its intended purpose anymore. If you smoke it, try to fix it some more, you know? It's, if it still works, yeah. it's there's still room to be improved. Beautiful yeah. people, we're going to get out of here, but uh-huh. I want to thank each and every one of you for showing up and joining us live. After the fact, uh, we'll be on, we do have a YouTube channel, I believe. You can see us there and uh, download us on all the podcasting things for later enjoyment. But, Yes. Let's roll the mm-hmm. credits and thank the people. Yay! <laughs> who make it possible? Yes, yes. Yay! And yeah, no, um, every single one of you out there, thank you. Not just for making this show possible, but for sticking around you know, because I, I, yeah. I, I'm a little <laughs> sad. Keeping it going. Uh, <laughs> I'm a little sad that no one used one of the 3D torture modes. Bunch of people right now just going to Twitch. Like, wait, what? (laughs) (laughs) 
We got new emotes. <laughs> Yay! They got approved the same day, too, so somebody's bored. Oh, wow. That was yeah. quick. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, the volunteers we have approving the uh, things, they're all right on it. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! We love you. Yay. See you again next week. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Bye, Artharin. Hello and hug. Hugs. <laughs> That was cool. That was quite loud. You're yes. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right there, and I still have my scale one, but I actually, I actually, um, I have another one I got from scale that I'm going to start using too as well. Mm -hmm. It's a different one. Mm -hmm. Do do do. Just decided to use it for a month. It was such, it was so wonderful. It was the last tech conference of the year. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it was very special. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. You don't feel like doing that? I copied the Vulcan from Mandro, so no, I don't need it anymore. Oh, yeah, that. Makes sense. Mm. What are you talking about, Scott? I told you about day drinking, dude. You gotta work your way up to it. <laughs> just don't. <laughs> can't do it out of the. Just calm After down, show, man. Ben. <laughs> yeah, Ben, I think I'm gonna pick up the uh, MIDI to USB. That'll be great for some of my old equipment, old synths and whatnot. For Steve Husband. <laughs> Let's see. We have that. that, that. <laughs> yeah, Matthew, if skill was the, the very last one, uh, that would be... That's There's a good one. Three. A wonderful community. <laughs> that's just one of the best conferences in the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hit Windows 10. Huh? <laughs> I hit Windows wait. 10. I have. I booted it on that tablet, so I can't say I've never used it. Uh. <laughs> yeah, no, it start uh, up. I, I put my uh, laptop to sleep, mm -hmm. and I just opened the lid because I saw the uh, work phone flash. <laughs> okay. It, are you going to... Oh, I, I was wondering if this was going to be like a two-part story to the next week. <laughs> so I had conclusion. to hold down the button until it went dead and then fire it back up. And you did that to your tablet? Wait. Your computer? Oh, no. Work laptop. Work laptop. It, it's a Dell Precision. Mm. <laughs> yes, that quad-core Xeon and Quadro M2000M. Yes. <laughs> Oh man, I managed to update that Windows 8 tablet that I bought to Windows 10. Then, there's like one of the next updates for Windows 10 was too big for the tablet, and it's like in this <laughs> infinite loop to where it can't install it. So, it's, it, I think that thing's genuinely spent like 35 minutes out of the box since I ever bought it. It was one of the feature updates for Windows 10 that um, the VM that we had for the base image, mm -hmm. the one that's just got like the base stuff. It didn't have enough space. We had a 60 uh, gig virtual disk for it, and it wasn't big enough. We needed to free up a total of 96 gigabytes for that stupid feature update to be able to yeah. do it on a bare bones install, like almost no drivers, almost nothing in it. It's small as you could get it, and it still needed 96 gigs. <laughs> Well, the only reason I bought that tablet was to have something that was easy to update our iTunes account. Yeah. For a, and, well, if you're wondering how come our iTunes account never gets updated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the feed gets updated, but, like, 
the cover art still like the old, old cover art. Mm -hmm. mm. I don't even know how to get back into that again. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Mm. All right. I like the you low, low have poly fun. penguin. I actually do need to go and do some work. Mm. See ya. Okay. Pedro, have a good rest of your night. <laughs> yeah, I like the low poly penguin, Ben. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Low poly penguin. On Twitch, the emote. It looks low poly. <laughs> what do you mean? The penguin that's on there, the Linux uh, G2T peng. <laughs> you say it so naturally. <laughs> well, I tried to zoom in on it so I could see what it, it, I wasn't seeing it too well. But now that I'm looking at it bigger, it's a low poly penguin. It's the use me penguin. Uh, yeah. But it's it looks very polygonal, uh, low poly. <laughs> no, it's just grayscale. Mm. I mean, if you've got it blown up big enough for you to see it, I'm sure it's pixelated. Yeah, no, I can see it. But you can see. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do do. But it Peter looks nice. Died. I like it. <laughs> There we go, and yeah, he does that sometimes. <laughs> All right, it looks like I have sorted this issue with a door. Even though it's given nice. me warnings about un transaction references to an unknown object, but hey, man. This is going to be one of the... Upcoming things and like a, our Patreon audio series is going to be setting up and configuring a door for podcasting. Nice. It's going to be one of those nice in-depth videos that people will watch and never do. Oh, they won't. I'm sure someone out there will. But... No, they won't. Everybody likes like, oh, yeah, I'd be terribly interested. That'd be awesome. No, no, that's, that's a lot of work. Like, <laughs> Can't do that. Can't be bothered. Mm -hmm. Bars on a separate eight. What are you talking about? Four VMs? Yeah. I, I, I don't tangle with VMs. I just don't. I don't have to. Hopefully I never will. Well, Jill, do you have anything going on? No. Uh. <laughs> okay, I'm thinking about right now. I don't know. Uh, you want to show to the class? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I am definitely going to <laughs> going actually to take a nap because I didn't sleep last night. Um, and then uh, get some exercise with my hubby. That's always fun. And we'll probably watch some um, a movie or. Another uh, new episode of something fun. Have you guys finished watching Picard? No, not yet. And that's the thing. Oh, yeah, the, neat. The... I can spoil it for you right now. Yeah, I already kind of know it, but I just, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's kind of cold. You're like, yes, yeah, the writing's so predictable. I don't really need to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd already seen spoilers. <laughs> but I love, the, I love the episode. Um, when he meets with uh, Riker and Troy, that was beautiful. <laughs> Fan service. <laughs> yes, it was. But it was beautiful. It was interesting. Uh, Troy forgot how to speak English, but hey, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not hating. Um, mm -hmm. That's the only thing. That's out. Is there anything else worth watching? I don't know. That's a good question. Well, of course, doc there's Doctor Who, which I That's haven't over. seen all of. Yeah, mm. I haven't seen it all yet either. I still, we still have a couple episodes to watch on that one. If you want to um, get our Doctor Who, our impromptu Game of Who, Doctor Who um, latest series recap, first thirty minutes of the pre pre super shows and from last week. That's all that yeah, was. Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> 
Aww, so true, Patrick. Yeah, time to go to bed and snuggle with <laughs> my hubby. <laughs> oh, I like the the shark. That's really cute, Patrick. That's animal <laughs> abuse, man. Sharks should be in my <laughs> All right, well, that's it. Uh, I'm going to bounce out of here. Aw. Hugs back to you, Artharon. And Patrick. And Scoots. And DeKresny. Man, if there is and any, Steve like, husband. some legitimate <laughs> plagues, you're going to be the first down, man. Oh. You God. can take all those, all those with you. <laughs> Death Hog. Coming to Netflix. All right. And by mm -hmm. week, I mean like two days. What are you talking about, Scott? Oh, have a good week. I don't know. I, you don't count weeks anymore. You count coffee hours and alcohol hours. <laughs> That's the way you do it. Very beautiful people. Bounce out of here. I'm going to make a show. And this Love will be you. up later today. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Oh, bye, drummer. Too, I see you there. <laughs> Toodles, near. <laughs> <laughs>